you know, you want to know what a typical day of work is like for me. First, I pull up to my job. I get out of the car and I'm like, every morning I'm like, how come an earthquake can't shake this, this building into a pile of rocks into the ground? How was that? I don't know. I don't know. It's it's uh What's happening out there? What is that in the Bible when everything goes to fucking shit? I don't know. We're having a There's minotaurs outside the shed. Anyhow. A fucking... A tornado could hit. Oh yeah, right in Melville. It'll it'll zip right around my job. I could, I, I'm confident of it. Yeah. Oh, we didn't even lose power. Everybody else is decimated. Everything was brought to rubble. Except for your job. So, you know, see you on Monday. We're, we're, we're open, by the way. Yeah. Can you come in tomorrow? You could sweep some of the debris off of the, uh, the the apron of the parking lot. The, the tornado went right around. That's right. Oh, I'd love to get that that call. Hey, uh, Jess, uh, bad news. Uh, tornado hit the building directly. So uh, you're going to be out of work for, uh, I don't know, a year. I'm like, oh, my God. This is... Uh, Oh my god, this is horrible. Oh. This is horrible. Uh, what's that sound? Yeah, this is terrible. Uh, nothing. I'm, I'm jerking off under the table. I'm so, I'm so happy! Anyhow. I go inside, the first thing I got to hear, you understand? We got this forklift driver that, that, that drives the receiving dock, you understand? This guy is, you know, basically crashes every into everything. That's right. He's got a reputation for just like crashing into everything. It's it's raining pallets, do you understand? When you, when you walk through the back door. The steel's rocking, it's raining pallets. Merchandise falling all over the place. The guy still has a job. I... I got to tell you something right now. I can't even say it. Anyhow, there's this guy and he's got his radio on constantly. And all he listens to, it's it's either Billy Joel, the piano man. Yeah. I sing a song, you're the piano man. Sing me a song tonight. Like, ah. I, there's a few songs that you're going to play on the radio and I'm going to vomit out the window. Hotel California, Stairway to Heaven. What else? Piano Man? I, enough is enough already. Enough is a fucking enough already. I love I love New York. Everybody thinks, you go to Long Island, you put on Piano Man, and everybody rocks back and forth at the ball like this. No, shut this shit off! Ah, oh, It's like you gotta pay the price. I know when you go to Jersey, it's the same shit. Whoa, we're half, you go into a bar. We're halfway there. Ho, ho, living on a prayer. No, I've been living on Bon Jovi around here. Shut it off. I be, Listen, I drive through Jersey. You turn on the, ra the radio, you li it's Bon Jovi. It's like, give it up already. These people have had it. They've had it. Oh, my God. We had this woman. I used to work in a bakery. Her name was Yolanda. Oh, my God. She loved Bon Jovi. It was, bon, it was, she, it was an old broad that, th that thought she still had it. You know these broads? They, they love Betty Boop for some reason. Do me a favor. Stay away from any broad that likes Betty Boop. All right? Because she, she still thought she was like Marilyn Monroe into her 70s. And she'd walk around. And like all the old bakers would go crazy for L Yolanda. And the name, Yolanda. I got news for you right now, guys. All right? Be careful what you name your daughter. 
okay? Because if you name it Yolanda, or like, I don't know, Roxanne, she's probably gonna be a hoe! Yeah! That's why you, you gotta name your daughter Gladys. Or Dolores, this type of thing. Look at, oh, we'll name her Gertrude. If you're any type of father at all, this is Gertrude, welcome to the world, Gertrude. You're gonna be ugly and nobody's gonna wanna fuck you. Stop with Yolanda. Are you kidding me? She had tats. I mean, they were swinging around, this type of thing. You understand? They were old, but they were there. Oh, and she came in with Bon Jovi t-shirts on. I love Bon Jovi. Yeah, I, I got news for you. What was the album? The album that ended my Bon Jovi career? Oh, when Slippery When Wet came out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody was all over it. I gotta admit, we will listen to it. Rex would listen to it. I'll blame it on him. I never owned the tape. I never owned the tape. Maybe I own the tape. All right, but come on. What do you want me to do? Then we found out that they, you know, they x-rayed his stomach. He had five pounds of cum in his stomach. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, I, I, we used to check the medical records when we were kids. That's all we needed. That's it. You didn't hear the news, Bon Jovi. Five pounds of cum in his stomach. You couldn't say anything about Bon Jovi then. That's right. Because they'd be like, oh, you like, you, you like listening to a guy with five pounds of cum in his stomach? You're like, oh, jeez. People were burning their Bon Jovi tapes. You understand? Yeah. I was just waiting for that. When New Kids on the Block, I was waiting for that. Where are the x-rays? Did anybody take x-rays? What are you people doing? My God. Five guys, five pounds of cum apiece. That's uh, 25 pounds of cum. Where's Fauci? Get Fauci out here. Where, where are we, where are we? Oh, Piano Man. Oh yeah, it's, it, I, you come, now it's God, God Almighty. You're bombarded, you understand? You're bombarded. First you ring the back doorbell, zing. Oh, nobody can answer on the first ring, zing. And you gotta hear in the building, okay, okay, one ring. That's when I hit it again, zing. Uh. The backdoor lady's losing her mind. It's like, first you gotta come into that. You only have to ring the bell once! Like, eh. Ah. Then I gotta hear Piano Man. It's, it's, it's Billy Joel, it's the Eagles, and the coup de gras is, this guy likes to listen to uh, the soundtrack for Frozen. Oh. 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 And, and, Mamma Mia. Ah. <sighs> and sprinkle in, so the, the other day I walk in, he's listening to Shania Twain. Short skirts, the, this, that, do, do, ba do, boom, crash. You understand? I feel like a woman. I'm, bum, bum, ba -da 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 -da. I'm like, are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious with this shit? It's a, he likes to go to country every once in a while. So it'll either be Shania Twain or it'll be, what's that other song? I got friends in low places. Ah, oh, where the whiskey. Ah, ah. I can't take it. It's like, it's psychological torture. Do you understand? So you walk, you walk in, and you're bombarded with psychological torture that goes right into the subconscious mind. Do you understand? And then you go, then you walk down the aisles. And there's, there's some people that don't understand, uh, I don't know, personal hygiene? Don't, 
That's right. So you walk by some people, they're working like animals. It sounds like somebody like threw a pound of bologna in the driveway during August and the sun's beating down on it. Yes. That's right. So now, now it's like, it's chemical warfare. There's all these different warfares happening. So, you know, the only solace I got is, and then I, I got this guy that comes up to me. He's the guy that's turning his, his grandma key into a police car. Okay. These are the people I work with. I'm like, I, we get, we're on the same pay grade. Do you understand? I said, how did this, how did this happen? Where's my guidance counselor? Oh my God. If I could get a hold of my guidance counselor, I swear to God. I take him out back and show him what it's like. All right, I got news for you right now. I don't know what happened. Maybe his mother kicked or whatnot. So he got this cutlass. Now, now I got to hear about the cutlass first. First, it's the Grand Marquis police car. I, I want to get the push bumper for the front. Somebody's got a push bumper on. He, you're putting a push bumper on the front of your Grand Marquis. It's not even. It's not even a Crown Victoria. I know. I know. My eyes are starting to cross just thinking about it. So he's got this eighty-five cutlass. You understand? I mean, the shitbox from Shitboxville. Hey, listen. I like a cutlass, but you got. If you're gonna, if you're gonna talk to me about a cutlass, it's got to be an eighty-seven cutlass supreme with the one-piece headlight. All right. I don't want to see your two piece headlights. I know they're all the rage now. It's like a Mustang with two, with the two headlights, the 86 Mustang. I'm out. I'm out. What are they? They're back in vogue now though, aren't they? That's right. In the eighties, you rolled up with, a, with an 86 Mustang. It was like, oh boy. Ooh. Yeah. Hey Billy. How, how are you? Anyhow. Yeah. Nobody had them. Nobody wanted them. It was like a Mustang too. I know Mustang two is a fire hot now. But back in the day, listen, I, t I tell a story before. When we were, I used to go to tech, like in, in, uh, it was like a college, you know, and everybody, you, you couldn't, listen, you couldn't park in a certain parking lot unless you had a V8 engine. Okay. They'd throw you out. It was the truth. So you go in there and all the guys from tech would come in Mustangs, the Chevelles, this type of thing. I had my Thunderbird. Everybody loved my Thunderbird, by the way, because it was such a fucking goof. Yeah, it had the vacuum canister headlights that would unroll like this. It's like, uh, it's kind of like a Corvette, right? Right? No, wrong. Not at all. Anyhow, at least it had a five liter Ford in it, which, you know, would garner some respect because all the Mustang guys had five liter Mustangs. So they, I, I almost, I was like, uh, I, oh, I don't know. Like if I went to jail now and I guess I'd go right to the, like the Aryans, like where do you go? Like, oh, where, excuse me, uh, if I'm going to jail, I love everybody. We can't, no white supremacists, you can't have that until you go to jail. And I'm like, excuse me, where are the white supremacists? Yes, the Nazis, I'd like to join. Yes, please. Hey, guys, how are you? Yeah, I'm here. I mean, you know, listen, please save me, save me. I don't want to get ass raped. How about that? How about that? Watch how fast you, you become a white supremacist in prison. It's true. It's true. So that's why I can't listen to anybody with their garbage bullshit. Okay? Uh, on on Facebook. Like I even go to Facebook. I got news for you. The best day of my life. When I when I die, son, if you if you're listening, my eulogy, best day of my life is when I canceled Facebook. That's right. I want him to say, best day of his life. He canceled they canceled Facebook. And and Facebook is so sneaky. When I canceled, they changed my account to Romanian. That's right. I hit cancel. I don't want it anymore. Cancel. And then they switched my whole account to Romanian language. That way I couldn't cancel it. That, so my account's still out there. It's just in Romanian. So now if I go there to try to cancel it, I'm like, ah, ah, bah, bah. Can't do it. Smart. Smart. Facebook. Very smart. Anyhow. Facebook, uh, what are we talking about? 
just wiped my uh, my mucus onto my pant leg, by the way. How about that? Yeah. Very civilized. What were we talking about? I, uh, I don't have a clue. That's called early onset Alzheimer's. Oh, everybody on Facebook, yes. They, they're gonna sit there and they're gonna tell you how you gotta live your life. That's right, until you go to prison. And then watch all that Facebook shit go out the window. Everybody should go to prison. I got news for you, by the way. I don't know why I say that. I just figured maybe you could learn something. The problem is when you go to prison, You come out and you kind of talk, you kind of talk like, uh, like you're from prison now. And you might have some tattoos, or as my, my friend's father would say, tattoos. Oh yeah, when, when I would go over his house, my friend's father would always say everything with a J. Well, hey, hey, Mr. Mr. So-and-so, what were you doing out there? I was, I was jutting down the tree with the Jane jaw. What's that? The dree with the Jane jaw. I was jutting down the dree with the Jane jaw. Huh? Cutting down the tree with the chainsaw. Oh. Oh, I see. That's great. I don't know, I lost my train of thought again. Oh, I'm, I'm drinking my jawfee. Yeah. Anyhow. I'm watching the Jace Ball game with Derek Jeter. He had a big cutout of Derek Jeter downstairs. I wanted to punch this thing in the stomach and just fold it in half and then watch him have a meltdown. Anyhow. Jeez, I, I, you know, I don't know what's going on now. I'm lost. Do, do, do. What are we talking about? Going to prison? Wow. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I wish I could rewind the tape. Anyhow, so that's it. So I got this guy. He comes up to me. He's like, oh, Cutlass, right? Cutlass, something like that. He comes up to me, he goes, uh, you know, great news today. And I'm like, oh, yeah, what, what's going on? He goes, uh, I found out I have a, a posse rear. Oh my God. I, first of all, I haven't had this conversation with somebody from the eighties. Remember the big thing in your car was to have a posse rear. Everybody was like, does it have a posse? It's got a posse. You know that? It's got a posse. You know, that, that was the whole thing. It had to have a posse rear. You understand? For those, for those that don't know, I don't know how you don't know this. If you don't know this, you can get the hell off my channel. Posse rear is like, the rear differential locks up and then you have, uh, you know, power to both wheels in the back. It was a huge thing. Drag strip. You know, if you did a burnout and you didn't have a posse rear, you were the embarrassment of the whole town. Yeah. What was it called? A one wheel peel? I I never had a posse, so I was always doing a one wheel peel. Oh, my Thunderbird, I put a spool in it. Yeah. Oh, that was interesting. A spool is when you completely lock up the rear differential. So it's always driving the two wheels. So when you go around the corners, the car goes <laughs> Or you go around an off ramp and the car's like Cause the tires, uh, you, you have no idea. Anyhow, real smart. That That's called being poor. That's called being broke and trying to have a race car on the street. Anyhow, he's like, I found out my car has a posse rear. I said freeze. Right now. I just did the quick calculation in my head. The receipt paper started going. 
I said, what year is your car? He's like, 85. I said, V8 or V6? V6? I said, you don't have a posi rear. And I walked away. And I could see, like, the temperature, like, rise like this. Because I said it so definitely. He's like, you don't know what you're talking about. Blah, 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 blah. I said, just drive. That's when I start saying as I walk away. I said, just drive the car, Dave. Just drive the car. All right? You're not going to win the Indy 500. Just drive the car. And I walk away. And he gets... He starts boiling. And that's basically the only enjoyment of my day. So I'm walking back. I don't know, 45 minutes later, I'm walking back. He's got to come up to me and stop me now. He's got to, he's confrontational. He's got to get in front of me. He goes, no, listen here. He goes, I was driving the car the other day. And I was driving over some loose, gra like dirt gravel. He goes, and I heard the right tire spin. And I'm like... I'm doing, I'm trying to figure this out in my head. This is why I'm wasting my thought, my brain cells here. And I'm like, yeah, Dave, you got an open differential. The tire that loses traction first starts to spin. That's the downfall of the open differential. He goes, no, 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 no. He goes, he thought the tire on the driver's side is always locked. And the tire on the right is always free. Huh. Like, huh. And then he heard the tire break loose on this side, so he figured he had a posse. I, I, I know, I know. You're falling asleep. So is I as he's explaining it to me. I said, no, that I just, I used to be a nice guy. Like, I used to, people would come up to me and tell me their bullshit, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's good bullshit. That's great. I I didn't want to ruin their day. You understand? I go along with it. Yes. Even though I knew complete bullshit. If it makes them happy, I'm in. You're happy. I'm happy. Everybody's happy. You continue your little chain of bullshit with everybody else. I don't care. Now I want to stomp it out like a cigarette on the floor. Do you understand? It's, it's how, I, how, how I get glee out of my day now. So I said, no, Dave. You're dead wrong. And then I walk away again. He's like, well, what are you talking about? You don't know anything. You know, I... again, he's getting fire hot. And I might have started laughing as I walked away. Like you're a complete moron. Yeah. So anyway. And then I say, as I'm walk, as I'm walking away, just drive the car, Dave. Just drive the car. Just drive the car. And trying to make his like, I don't know, head explode. I'm, I'm, my dream is one day I'll just tell him to drive the car one too many times, and his head will explode like the guy from Scanners. That's right. Blood pressure, stroke, thrombosis, aneurysm. I mean, bring it on. Coronary embolism. Bring it on. Maybe I'll crack one of those uh, scabs in in his uh, artery in his leg from smoking from smoking nonstop. I'll crack off one of those scabs in the, in that artery and it'll go up to his heart and maybe plug plug a venturi or something and then we'll be done with this conversation. That's right. You get you get into a fight with an old guy, just kick him in the legs, break one of those scabs loose. It goes right up to the heart and here we go. I love it. I, I love how everybody goes to the hospital. You ever notice this? Everybody has a heart attack, and then they go to the hospital, and then and then you got to hear the story the next day. You know, I had a I had a blood clot, and it went up. It was traveling up, and they caught it in time, and uh, they said I, I should be dead. Everybody should have been dead. I love doctors. They love to pretend like they worked a miracle on you. Oh yeah, they'll get you in. You have a heart attack. They do something. I don't know. They put that. That nitroglycerin under your tongue, and then when you come out of it, they're like, wow, you almost died. We just saved you. A minute later, you would have been dead. And the guy's like, oh my God, modern medicine. He leaves the hospital. Doctors are amazing. I gotta send this guy flowers. There's a doctor at home surrounded by flowers. He's like, another one. <laughs> I Honey, where are we getting all these flowers? I told this fucking jerk off. He was he almost died. Yeah. If we didn't get to him a second earlier. Uh, you know, he would have been gone. <laughs> More flowers showing up at the door. 
They think smoking's bad for them, these morons. They think smoking's bad. All right. Anyhow. So I come in the next day. Matt. And, and here he comes, right? He's walking. I'm over here like I'm cleaning something out. I don't know. Cleaning out the floor scrubbing machine, whatever. He goes walking by. I said, hey, Dave. I said, uh, good morning, by the way. Uh, I want to thank you. And he's like, what do you? He's like, well, what? Do you? And he like perks up. He's like, why? I said, I, I told all my buddies about that, how you thought there was a, a, a posse in an 85 uh, Cutlass with a V6. Oh, my God. We all fell to pieces laughing. <laughs> he sits there. He looks at me. He looks at me like this, and he goes, you can't get me mad. <laughs> Translation. I got you mad. Then I got to work with my partner who I got news for you right now. Everybody's lives are so boring. Do you understand? It's bad. My life is boring. You, it doesn't get more boring than my life. Trust me. Oh, tr tr I know if you jumped into my shoes for a week, I'd have to fight the gun out of your mouth. I'm telling you right now. But when you get around other people that are in the same shoes as you, you don't want to talk to nobody. You don't want to hear about everybody's boring fucking life. That's what you got to hear about. Boring fucking life. I said, I got news to you. I I'm 45. I probably have like 20,000 days left to live. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. It's probably more like 10,000 days. I did the math. It's like 20,000 days to live. Think about that. I got 20,000 days left. If I'm lucky. And now I'm going to listen to your horse shit. It's bad enough I'm here burning eight of those hours. Can you imagine? And now I got to listen to how you went to get your car inspected and you needed alignment and you got a bad tie rod and you got to order the tie rod. I wish when you shot yourself in the head, you could do it twice. What a shame you could only do it once. And your wife wants to paint the bathroom. So, my, I, I was talking to my partner at work, and his big moment is he saw a documentary on Roddy Roddy Piper, and now he's going to tell me every moment about it. Listen, I like Hot Rod Roddy Piper better than anybody, okay? But I don't want to hear about the WWE documentary, number one. I love this. So, he's thinking, tell me this is the best documentary of all time. I said, really? Who did it? WWE. I'm out. I don't want to hear about it. If I want to hear wrestlers shoot, you can go on, on YouTube and, I don't know, they dig up Iron Sheik. Here, here's $100 for crack. What happened? <sighs> Marty Jannetty, come on in. Here, here, here's two bottles of wild turkey. Tell me what happened. <sighs> and then I get the truth. You understand? They get these guys, they give these guys a couple hundred dollars that way they can, I don't know, maybe get a hotel for the night. You know, they could sleep in a fucking uh, Howard Johnson's and have pancakes in the morning. Yeah. Instead of waking up on Hollywood Boulevard with a pants full of piss. So he's going on and on about this fucking Roddy Piper fucking thing. Anyhow, so I gotta listen to this. Oh yeah? Oh yeah? Oh yeah, meanwhile I'm thinking about other things. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even tuned in. I just set my mouth to oh yeah every five, every ten seconds. It's like a timer. <coughs> oh yeah? I'm like, what am I gonna do when I go home? You know? Uh, fucking dog. Oh yeah? Uh... 
yeah, the, the gas line upstairs. Oh yeah, the gas line for the oven upstairs is leaking. The, the fucking, the gas line is, the gas line's not leaking. I went up there, oh yeah? The gas line's not leaking. The lady's complaining, the gas line's leaking. She smells gas. I'm spraying everything with a water bottle, oh yeah? Did nothing's leaking. I try to show her, look, nothing's leaking. I don't smell gas. She smells gas. All the dead burners are off, oh yeah? This is what, the, this is what I'm thinking about. So anyway, then you think you'd lay off of it. Like after he told you like, uh, I don't know, like a half hour of the entire documentary. Then we go out to 7-Eleven for coffee. I'm sitting in my car. He goes and gets coffee. I, I didn't get coffee. I had a sandwich. Ugh. Is anybody still awake? He goes out for coffee. He comes back. Um, as he went in for coffee, I'm checking, I'm checking, uh, you know, I don't know, I'm reading the news here. Wow. SpaceX. Four astronauts just came barreling back into the atmosphere, crash landed in the ocean. The entire military went to go pick them up from a, from a speck in the ocean. I said, oh my God, this is so fucking miraculous. My buddy comes in to the car. I said, can you believe this? The four astronauts came back from, they were up in the space station. They came back, plunged into the ocean, like, like back, like back when the guys came back from the moon. This type of thing. Everybody's okay. It's fucking miraculous. He goes, Did you know that, uh, that, uh, Roddy Roddy Piper hit, hit, uh, Jimmy Superfly Snooker with a coconut in the head? I'm like, What? I said, I, Guys just landed from space. They were up in the, up in space, the space station. He was supposed to hit him with that, like, uh, a coconut that was already cut. But he hit him with the whole coconut. And uh, you should have seen him. He almost got knocked out. Yeah. You want to see Roddy Roddy's greatest performance. I mean, it's fucking, they live. What a movie. Think about, can you think about a wrestler that did, like, a smash hit movie? I can only think of like what Predator, and they live. They live is one of the classic movies of all time. Yeah, the fight scene between Roddy Roddy Piper and the black guy is. If you never saw They Live, treat yourself. Treat yourself. What a fantastic movie! I want to watch. I'm going to make my wife watch it now. <laughs> you think I won't? Oh yeah, Amazon Prime. Guys, oh, Callahan, we're half hour in here. I don't know where the time goes. I'm here to tell you that we're reporting for duty. That's right. We don't take a day off around here. Oh. Oh. like that was scanning for crimes guys then I come home from work I got news for you you know what I've been getting into gardening it's the freakish thing it's like the uh, the thing I hate the most I came home I started weeding the gardens like the, the flower beds out of bush beds I don't know what they call I started weeding it was so relaxing one of the things I used to hate the most in my life was weeding. You gotta understand something. Saturday morning cartoons would happen, and that kind of ties into what we what we're doing here today. In the 1980s, Saturday morning cartoons would happen. Most magical thing in a child's life: Saturday morning cartoons. Fighting with our sis my sister to watch the Littles, you know, the Smurfs, uh, you name it, Dungeons and Dragons, this type of thing. All the Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, she wanted to watch Strawberry Shortcake, this type of thing. Care Bears. I mean, we'd wrestle for the TV. Epic battles. Anyhow. Uh, but then, then, the cherry on top of Saturday morning cartoons. Saturday morning cartoons would end around, I don't know, what was it? Was it? 
10 o'clock, would roll right into Pee Wee's Playhouse. And oh my God, what magic. What magic. You go into Pee Wee's Playhouse, which is a fantasy realm. I wanted to, but I, I modeled my show after, after Pee Wee's Playhouse. Oh yeah, a lot of people don't know that. But uh, I always wanted to have, uh, instead of Conky, I wanted to have Conti. And it was basically going to be a giant snatch. And I would reach in and I would pull out games and like I would have corn syrup in there. So when I pulled out the games, they would like the corn syrup would like alien's mouth. They'd be drenched. The game would be ruined. That was the whole point. You know, one day we'll have and Cunty would talk to me. And it would be like a real cunt. <laughs> I know. One day when we have the budget and the space. I mean, where are we going to put Cunty right now? Anyhow, I always wanted that fantasy realm because I remember watching Pee Wee's Playhouse and getting lost in it. And then the harsh reality and why we use, when we, when we raise and lower the cabinet, we use the end. I'm talking! New Garden, 84th Avenue. For the atria, elderly cell head trauma. Head trauma. You're going to have head trauma, right? I let, listen, you're out of here. You're breaking up my train of thought. So the magic, other than Rita falling, and the magic of Saturday morning, the end of that magic was signified by the last song of Pee Wee's Playhouse. And that's why I would use it at the end when we raise up the cabinet. Because it signified that all happiness, joy, fantasy, and uh, imagination was over. And then my father would come in the room and he'd go, I think he was triggered by the music. Get outside and weed the garden. He'd be like, oh! Ah! 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 And then you go outside and you the monotony of pulling weeds out of dirt. And it was never done right. And I'd, then my father would come over, inspect the work, make me do it over again. You forgot this one. You forgot that one. And it was just, it was hell on earth. And I always promised myself I would never, ever weed a garden again. And I stuck by that promise until last week. I started weeding the flower beds. And you know what? I was out there in nature and I had my little rake and I'm raking around the plants. I'm like, you guys need a drink. Like I'm cultivating the soil around the, the, the bushes. I'm like, you know, pressing the, the, the hoe. I don't know what it is. It's a spiked hoe. I don't even know what it's called. It's a fucking rake. Pressing it into the ground, like making pockets so water can go down. And I was like, I was like getting in touch with nature. Kind of. It sounds stupid. But I was like, yeah. It's like, I'm going to help you guys out. And then I watered them. And everything looked kind of pretty. And I said, let me water them. And I'll look at them the next day. And the next day, they all looked happy. I said, oh my God, something happened here. It's just like I got into that. I know. I know. I, 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 I know. All right. All right. We're done with that. Guys, we go out to the garage sale. We go out to the garage sale. It's early. And I roll up on this one garage sale. It's an older woman. Okay, and I see Star Wars toys piled up on a table. Just piled up there. Not even organized or anything like that. So immediately as I'm walking up the driveway, I'm like, oh my God, I'm like Star Wars toys. Like vintage Star Wars toys. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of Star Wars toys out there, right guys? I mean, we can all be fooled, right? But I was like, this is like the real deal stuff. I, I recognize some things. So like... Like unleashing a pit bull, I tell my son, I said, look, I said, look, Tani, toys. And I send them over there. And I go over to where there's a crate of records. Because I don't want I don't want to pretend like I'm interested at all. So he goes shooting over there. He's like picking them up. I'm like, oh God, he's touching them. But I don't discourage him. I said, let's let him go. So I'm looking through records and whatnot. And he's like, Dada, toys, Dada, toys. So I go over there and I'm like, Tani. No, I said, we don't have room for this. If we bring it home, your mother's going to freak out. I said, no. And then I go back to the records. I'm like, I'm looking through the records and whatnot. 
And then I and then I come back. He's like, toys, toys, ah! And she's like, oh, he likes the toys. And I'm like, ah, oh, I know. So I say to he's like, dad, ah, toys. I'm like, finally, I'm like, how much you want for the toys? She goes, I don't know. Make me an offer. I said, I don't know. You take twenty bucks for all of them. <laughs> I don't want toys, but now I want them all. Okay. She's like, oh yeah, sure. Okay. She just goes, let me get you a box. She gets a box and she's walking back from the from the garage and she's like, oh, she goes, these are my son's toys. He's out hanging up garage sale signs right now. I'm like, oh yeah. I'm like, <laughs> so we start loading the box or whatever, and I get halfway done like loading the box, and she goes, I hear her say. Oh, here he is now. And I was like, <laughs> I start loading the box up. I handed a 20. And as I'm walking across the lawn, we pass each other. I got this, I'm like this, I'm like, this. I'm like hey, good morning. And he does one of these. Looking at the toys like, oh, those are my toys? Let me tell you something right now. I threw my son in the car by one arm. Do you understand? I tossed the, the bin in the front seat and I was like John Force. Do you understand? I did a, a quarter mile drag away from there. I didn't even buckle my son in the car seat. I know. I know. And I did like a zero to 60 in, I, I don't know, Tesla plaid times. Yeah. I never, the, the Mazda engine went from like no oil pressure from being turned off to turned on and full gas. Uh, I was basically riding on the uh, the bearing journals with no oil. I didn't even give the oil pressure time to come up and I had my foot to the floor and I was out of there. I was just waiting to see the guy in the rear view mirror chasing down the block. <laughs> Here's an Obi-Wan, leave me alone. <laughs> but guys, what a burst of nostalgia. And I figured I did not go through it. I did not go through it. We're at two. This is Tuesday. This happened Saturday. I swear I didn't go through it because I wouldn't do that to you guys. I figured let, let's check it out together. Have a little fun. Because uh, to be honest with you, I'm not a Star Wars guy. I'd love to sit here and tell you, uh, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, you know that uh, Darth Vader. I, 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 I don't know anything. Okay. It was a big moment in my life when I knew wh what the planet was in, in Empire Strike. It's Hoth, right? The snow planet, it's Hoth. I got news to you right now. When I watched All Wars as a kid, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Rex knew. Rex had like a high IQ. He's like, well, the rebels and, the, and you know, this, this, and uh, this is the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the Alliance. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I'm looking at the pictures. Hey, there's Yoda. Hey, look at spaceship explosion. Cool. I I watched the prequels to Star Wars. I remember my friend dragged me to prequels. Remember when the, the prequels first came out, Phantom Menace? Oh my God, everybody was so excited. Was I excited? Not really. I went along for the ride. I remember they went to see, they went to go see it like 20 times in a row. I was like, oh, one time's fine. Uh, listen guys, I'll meet you when you get out, okay? I remember I watched it. I was like, what the fuck am I watching? I just knew that when Jar Jar Binks hit the screen, uh, I wanted to lunge at the screen and grab him by the neck and choke him to death. <sighs> Other than that, did I know what was going on? No. It just took me to like 40 years old. I think I was like exactly 40 years old. And I watched the prequel first. The prequel first. And then I watched the original Star Wars, and I was like, oh, I finally get it. And I forgot already. So, I mean, i that's the great thing about me. My memory so I could watch Star Wars again and be like, oh, the magic's still here. What happens next? Anyhow. But I was there as a kid. I saw Return of the Jedi at the drive-thru, and that's what makes this kind of special. But what's nostalgic for me is I used to go over Rex's house, and we would play with his Star Wars stuff. So a lot of this stuff he had. So I remember playing with it. So which is pretty cool. Uh, he had Millennium Falcon, this type of thing. I mean, we used to put the guys in the in that thing with the foam and you crush them. Ah, they're getting, we're, we're crushing them in the trash compactor. Ah, this type of thing. And one thing that Rex did, <coughs> did have, 
<laughs> was this sucker right here, right? This guy with the, uh, you know, the erectile dysfunction. All right. Now, this was the walker, right? And if I'm not mistaken, this is like 82, 83. Yes. This is when Kenner was on fire. Am I wrong? They were making, they made, I think they made a fucking action figure for every character in the movie. Yeah. And what wonderful toys. Remember the walker? It had this feature where you hit a switch and you could unlock the legs and you can make it, look, it walks still. Isn't that nice? I'm ready to do my own stop motion. Oh, how neat. That's right. And what do you do? You squeeze it down and you lock it. I still remember. Kinda. Um. Where is it? There you go. And then, and then it stands by itself. What a miraculous toy that that thing can stand on its own. Wow. Yeah. Guns on the side. I think the hatch is missing. I mean, these toys are, you know, they're kind of beat up. But oh yeah, what does it say? 1982. Yep. Remember the guy, you put the guy in the top? Freeze! Rebel scum! I don't know. There's a walker there. I love how it stands. What a cool toy. Oh yeah, here we go. This is the, uh... Put this together here. Yeah, the Ewok. The Ewok village. <laughs> Jesus H. Christ, huh? What'd you have here? A little thing here that you can wind up. Look at this, Kenno. Look at that. You can wind this up like a rotisserie. That's right. What do you put? Uh, RTD2 on the end of that thing? Who are they putting on the rotisserie? No, uh, Han Solo. You put them on there over the fire. There's the campfire right there. How cool. Little cubbies. Look at this thing. Little cubbies right here. The imagination. That's the thing. When you were a kid, the imagination ran wild. You were really doing, like, you can't, as an adult, you're like, you're so fucking jaded and your imagination is shot and you just want to die that you can't have fun anymore. But when you're a kid, these things were all magical. Little spots, every nook and cranny. You understand? What are these little holes right here? What, a dart shoot out? I don't know. Look at that. Little village there. Here's a little cage. Oh, there's a fence. These are little fences and everything like that. I guess you stick these in here like this. Oh, look at that. We got a fence. <laughs> You're gonna love it, right? Got a little, oh, maybe you raise and lower the cage, right? Little elevator. Those are little Ewoks. They had it all figured out. Ah. Yeah. What am I going to tell you? Do I know anything about what we got here? No. What is this? Y-Wing? I'm wrong, right? Probably wrong. You got a little button there. Wow. Look at the detail in that, huh? Little foot comes down. I don't know. This is kind of beat up here. No cockpit. Probably missing a cannon there. Little thing on the bottom here. What is that? Pop down? What is this? A little, little bomb bay door? Come on, you. Come on, you stinking thing. Maybe, maybe there's a roll of hundreds in here. That's what I always wondered. I always hope for when I go to a garage sale. You're going to open up something and there's going to be like a roll of hundreds. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. Also, some G.I. Joe stuff in here. Which is interesting. Whoop. Look at that. What is that? Halitzer? Laser Halitzer? That's facing the wrong way, right? Look at that. Oh, I love how I love how on the side, this is anti, this must be uh, anti-aircraft artillery here. It has how many planes it shot down. Oh yeah. Take that, Cobra. Oh, how cool. United States. That's right. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Here we go. Oh my God, look at this thing, huh? This is, uh, what is this, this Boba Fett's rig right here? 
Look at that thing, huh? Wow. Got a little handle in here so you can fly it the right way. I don't know. What are you gonna do? Got ca ca what, cannons down here? Look at this thing. You take the cockpit out. Huh. I don't know. Look, there's a little thing in there to strap them in. Oh yeah, a little thing. You strap your action figure in there. How neat. Slave one, right? Slave one. See, I know, I know, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. That's right. I, I, I like, I like the the original Star Wars, the original, like the first Star Wars movie. I love the idea of Luke, like on the farm, this type of thing. You know, like a farm boy that just wants to get out. Like I imagine every farm boy wants to discover the world or the universe. In this case, it's the classic story, right? Yeah. What the heck is this? Oh! Got a piece of fence stuck in there. What is this, a reactor? <laughs> I don't know, a little reactor. Hold on, let's pull, the, let's, let's pull the fuel rods out and we'll have a meltdown. Hold on a second here. This thing turns. Oh, there's a guy in there, look at that. Hold on a second. Oh, okay. You gotta turn this. Yes, oh, look at that. There's Han Solo. And now here he is in uh, carbon. Wow, that's neat. I didn't even know about that toy. So this is the carbonator? <laughs> One minute, he, there he is. The next minute, there you are. You're, you're uh, encased in carbon. Wow. Oh, how cool. All right. Oh, boy. Yep, here we go. We got a fighter here. Uh, with a broken wing. How about that? I don't know what what this one is called. All right, get off my back. Let me see if it says on here. 1978. Yeah. Like, how is that wing not supposed to break? That's what I want to know. Look at that. Look at the leverage on this thing. How was that supposed to not break? Anyhow, there you go. Hmm. Got a little button on here. Oh. I don't know what that button does, but here's the hatch. You can open the hatch, right? Oh, what's that? Oh, what a crazy hatch. It opens like this. Oh, cool. You put your guy in there. What does this button do? I don't know. Oh, it's a little light. Maybe it operates this little LED on the front there. Oh, how neat. How neato. Hey. Uh, yeah, what the heck is this thing? Is this He-Man? This is He-Man, right? Oh, baby, look at that! <laughs> That's He-Man! Yeah! Hey, uh, hey, man-at-arms, where's Taylor? I used to love how He-Man talks. He was so, like, nerdy, you know? Hey, uh, uh, Man-at-Arms, have you seen my cigarettes anywhere? I used to love how everybody was jacked in He-Man. Oh, here we go, here we go. Here's another, there's another He-Man vehicle, right? Mattel, oh my god, 1981, yeah. Look at that thing, it's got a winch on it. Right, that's a winch with an anchor, this type of thing. I don't know who drove this thing. It, you know, it was it was legendary in the neighborhood. My buddy Todd's mother used to work for Mattel. Oh yeah, he had Intellivision like 
all the games, He-Man action figures coming out of his nose. I remember I had a fake He-Man action figure. It was like a bug. I don't know. And like he had like the whole entire collection. And it was like, huh. My mother works for Mattel in the 80s. I, what a charmed life! This kid was like the Elon Musk of kids. For Christ's sake. She was like one of the higher ups too. Wow, this is interesting stuff, huh? Here we go. We got this guy here. Whoa. What's that guy? Uh, I don't know. He's got a little hatch here. Ah, I guess you could ride your... Look at how interesting. You could even uh, cut him open and hide in his belly. Boy, that plastic's hard now, huh? A wampa? What were they? I don't know. This type of thing. Oh, yeah. Here's a, what was this? The Battle Cruiser? I don't... It's just like He-Man's motorcycle, right? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Mexico. Made in Mexico. Wow, would you look at that. What an imagination they had down in Mattel. Uh, what is this thing? Oh, this is the thing. This is the thing that uh, Jabba the Hutt sat on, right? This is the cage. Oh, this is where all the, all the fences are for the Ewok. Thing there, all the f all the fences are in here. Yeah, put them all in there, right? Yeah. This is where he keep, used to keep his lunch, right? <laughs> Job of the hut. Yeah. Imagine that. He's basically sitting on his own refrigerator. How about that? Job of the hut was smoking. Come on, my kind of guy. My kind of pile of shit. All right. Oh, baby. What the heck? Look at this thing. Who the hell was driving this? Is this Mattel at it again? So the, the, what did this thing ride on the gears and go around? It's like a roller coaster ride for action figures. Wow, look at that thing. Oh, the coup de gras if the battery still worked. So this goes, rides to one end, turns around. Look at this thing. What the hell's going on here? He-Man! He-Man, He-Man, Star Wars, G.I. Joe. I, what more do you want? Transformers, GoBots, this type of thing? Oh yeah, here goes this, this, this fucking Spying son of a bitch right here. What's that thing? I don't know. We got a little uh piece of little piece of hearth here. Look at the funny thing is you turn this and I don't know what that is. Proton cannon. Something something turns here. Oh, and jumps. This jumps. This is what it like the cannon blows up. Kenneth, Kenneth was on top of it, baby. Look at that. Oh, here's the here's the cannon right here. Look at that. Here's the cannon. That's a piece of the cannon, right? Was that one of the cannons on half? Yeah. Oh yeah, we're going to look at this. Look at that. What is that thing? I don't know. You think it would say? That's pretty neat. Oh these what are these spin around? This is the one that shot the line, right? Around the, 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 uh, the ad at, right? Shot the little toe line. I don't know.
There he is. All right. There. Let, hold on. Let's put him on top of his lunchbox here. Oh, there goes the fences. There he goes. <laughs> wow, this guy had the life, right? All he did was eat, smoke, and, and look at a hot Princess Leia in a fucking uh, bikini. Yeah, slave Princess Leia. Yeah, that's the way we like to see Princess Leia. Then we got some odds and ends in here. We got this guy coming at you. Yeah. Jeez, all sorts of pieces. I remember this shuttle right here. I remember this shuttle. This was the escape shuttle, right? Rex had that. We used to put characters in there, roll it around. All like, uh, I don't know. Here's the smoking thing. I guess Jabba the Hutt's uh, hookah pipe. Look at this thing. What was going on? Hey, uh. Yeah, a little smoke and pipe. Yeah, there's all sorts of things in here. Uh, got this thing. I don't know. Oh, that's the saddle. That's the saddle for that guy. All right. Got another, some, uh, another G.I. Joe artillery piece here. This is all fucked up. Anyhow, here goes a piece of, piece of hearth, I guess. Oh, this is that, is this the hatch for the walker? Oh, cool. Ay, ay, ay. Is that the hatch? Oh, here's the hatch. Is this the hatch? Yes, it's the hatch. Put it on there. Look at that. Here we go. <laughs> How satisfying. It's got a gun on top. Another gun. Like this guy needs another gun, huh? Some more fences. Oh, here's the guns for that. For that G.I. Joe piece. More fences. This, oh, right here. Okay. Look at that. It's not even... There we go. All right. More anti-aircraft artillery. Oh, what a badass gun that is. Look, this one has folding wheels. I went, oh, so it's when it's in place. Huh. Whoa! We're off camera here. Yeah, there goes, there goes the guns for that. And then the wheels fold down when you're firing. And then fold out, and maybe click. Ooh. It's amazing these plastics hold up today. They really do hold up. How about that? Nice. And then all the, somebody's boot. I don't know, there's a boot there. Some kind of piece. These are all little pieces of, uh, I don't know, maybe that's for the slave. I don't know. Axes, there's an ax in here. No, surprisingly, no action figures. So that's it. A couple of guns. I don't know where they go. That's it. Guys, what a nice... <laughs> Look at this. Look at all this stuff. What a nice little trip down memory lane, huh? Oh, come on. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. That brings me back memories of when we used to play with toys at Rex's house. Okay. I had to switch to my... We ran out of batteries. I had to switch to my camera phone. So... I just want to say, this reminds me of a time where we, we used to play with Star Wars, He-Man action figures over Rex's house until we would get so rambunctious that his father would come downstairs and he would say, Rex Brandon Gossett, God damn it! <laughs> And then we knew it was time to go play with the Texas Instruments video game console. Compl learning computer, right? Yes, of course. We learning computer. Anyway, guys, thank you for taking this nostalgic ride. It was a lot of fun.
Do you realize that you just tuned in to the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization? And you better believe that. With a 4K face! We'll see you next time. Guys, I don't know if you're aware of this, but we are doing such a, it's such a fantastic show on Patreon. I'm telling you, I'm so proud of it. We are nine episodes in now. We have nine fully fledged episodes on there. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we do, we give advices to people that need advices. That's right. You got a problem? What's the matter? You got ulcers? You come to me. I, medical stuff, guys. I'm like a doctor. I'm better than a doctor. I'm better than a doctor. Financial, you want to get rich? You come to me. I'll make you rich. I'll make you wealthy. I'm not kidding. Yeah, I mean, I'm not wealthy. I'm not rich. I'm poor. But I know how to make you rich. Imagine that. Okay. Anything. Working out? You want to pump up the guns? I know old school bodybuilding. You understand? You come to me. You come to me. Email down below. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to help you. I want to help you. I have to help you. It's what I'm uh, it's what I'm here to do. I'm here to help you, and I want to. So, guys, email me down below. Advice is in the header. That's right. You're going to get wonderful advices just like this. You want to live forever? I'm going to tell you right now how to live forever. Very simple. Change one thing in your life. Improve your... Um, my Susie, she started uh, talking at the age of one. Well, congratulations! I'd be more worried about the commie bitch uh, teaching him uh, communist, uh, uh, you know, ideology. That's what you need to worry about, pal. I know. It's like mind-blown stuff. You're really gonna, I'm telling you, you're gonna come out of it enlightened. All right, guys. Like I said, email down below. Send me your advices. Please, because we're running out of advices. <laughs> no. And uh, that's it. We solve it just like that. Anyway, guys, we'll see you next time.